Well, uh, welcome back. In my previous lecture, if you see, I have tried to uh, represent 2D motion in vector notation. As I told you, I wanted you to follow these lectures rather carefully because you never come across such kind of a methodology in any of the textbooks. The purpose of writing in this form I already explained to you is that it becomes very easy for you to work out uh, any problem that is asked. So when you have projected a body at an angle theta with horizontal, with a speed u, then I resolve this into horizontal and vertical components and then uh, I found out that acceleration is downward Therefore, I wrote these u and a expressions and this is constant, this is zero. Therefore, writing down the next four equations, say the three equations is very easy. That's what we did. And in this, uh, the first thing that I, I talked about, what is the change in velocity in time t? You've got gt downwards. And at what time uh, the velocity is perpendicular to the initial velocity? So, we put that product to be zero and we got this answer t equal to u by g sin theta. Many such things you can find out from this. Say for example, what time it takes for the body's vertical velocity to be zero and what is its displacement. For example, I am looking at three. Uh, I would call it as t is equal to t a if uh, vertical component of velocity is zero. This is vertical component. There are two vertical components. One that pertains to time, other that pertains to displacement. First we are interested in time, therefore we look at it. So if I do that, put that equal to zero, this implies T A is equal to U sin theta by G. T A is equal to U sin theta by G. In a similar way, we call Y is maximum vertical displacement from point of projection. Maximum vertical displacement from point of projection, then uh, your vertical component is zero. What is the vertical component? This one. This implies u square sin square theta is 2gh or h is equal to u square sin square theta by 2g. You see, don't call it as maximum height unless the body is projected from the ground. So I'm calling it as maximum vertical displacement where maximum vertical displacement from point of projection. All right. So you got time of ascent, you got maximum displacement. Now, another thing is, if I'm referring to a case where body is projected and it reaches the same level of projection. Body is projected and reaches the same level of projection. That means your vertical displacement is zero. That means this must be zero. If this is zero, this implies u sin theta t is of g t square or if this t becomes time of flight and that is equal to u sin theta by g. Remember this is only a special case that I am talking about. You project a body and it reaches the same level in which case the time of flight becomes uh, 2u sin theta by g. Now, with this, uh, 
little background of uh, writing down the uh, velocities, uh, accelerations, the displacements, everything in vector form. We can get many of the parameters which are otherwise rather difficult to obtain now. Now remember, now with this little background, let me now look at the topic projectiles. Now any body that is projected in the air is called a projectile. How many types of projectile are there? If I project it uh, upwards, I will call it as vertical projectile. I may project it downwards also, then also it is called vertical projectile. Uh, another case, I project at an angle, so this is called oblique projectile. also called symmetric projectile because it reaches same level, initial level, final level are one and the same. This is called oblique projectile. Another thing what we generally work out is, suppose from the top of a tower, I project it horizontally, uh, say from a height h. Now this is called horizontal projectile. That is called horizontal projectile. Now coming here, I take again the tower height h. But this time it is oblique projectile from the top of a tower. Oblique projectile from the top of a tower. Next. The same thing. You can visualize uh, another case here where I project the body downwards. So these two are one and the same, but one is projected upwards, other is projected downwards. So vertical projectile 1D we have already studied. This is oblique projectile on a level ground. Oblique, uh, horizontal projectile from the top of a tower and uh, oblique projectile from the top of a tower, two cases, upward oblique projection and downward oblique projection. Now, this is what we are going to discuss, but first, let us focus our attention on uh, this oblique projectile from, or rather on the level ground. It is also called symmetric projectile because the second half of this projectile is a mirror image of the initial part. Now, let me give a discussion to this here. Uh, I am projecting it with a velocity u at an angle theta, say, after some time, this, if I look at the initial, I told you, this is horizontal direction, vectorially I will take it as i. This is vertical direction, vectorially I will take it as j. That is fine. Now you cos theta is the curve, right? 
there is no acceleration in the horizontal direction because acceleration is always directed downwards. Wherever you see, G is downwards. It's a constant value. Everywhere it is downward and constant G. So there is no discussion on that. But uh, the horizontal component of acceleration is always zero. So whatever is the horizontal component of velocity, that remains constant throughout this motion. So when, when I draw this at every stage, look, I try to put the same length of the arrow here and same this is also C U cos theta, U cos theta, U cos theta likewise, right? And what is the velocity direction? That is the velocity direction. What is this part? This part is a vertical component. Let this make an angle alpha. This is a general thing. The velocity, uh, initially it is theta. After time t, let it become alpha. I'm just putting it uh, in an appropriate fashion and let this direction be x-axis and this be y-axis. Okay? Now, if you draw and uh, draw those components, we already drew on those things, i u cos theta plus j u sin theta and a is equal to minus j g. The rest of the things also we have written down in from that you can interpret x is equal to u cos theta t. Now this is uh, being expressed in scalar form. You know how to write in vector notation. Uh, for your information maybe I can give you here just like that. Uh, u bar is u cos theta plus j u sin theta, a bar is equal to minus j g, and b t bar is u cos theta plus j u sin theta minus g t, s is equal to i x plus j y, or i u cos theta t plus j u sin theta minus Z, T. Uh, no, I'm sorry. This is uh, U sin theta T minus half G T squared. Similarly, V X Y is equal to I U cos theta plus J U square sin square theta minus 2 G. Now this is a, I already written down in the a little while ago, you could go through that. Same thing. Only thing I am now trying to do is that uh, this x is written as u cos theta t, I am writing it, and then uh, y is equal to u sin theta t minus of dt square. Now, if I eliminate this, so remember, in most of these graphs or analysis, some many times they ask you what is the path of this particular graph. Maybe uh, it may be straight line, it may be a circle, it may be electrical, hyperbolical and parabolical. And more generally we come across it may spiral also, but all those complications are not now in this at this stage. So whenever you want to get the path of the particle, then those three or two coordinates, space coordinates must be related. That will give the precise path. For example, I'll give you here crude way. If y is equal to mx plus c form, it is a straight line. You know very well. And if uh, you have say y square plus y square is equal to some kx. That means one of the coordinates has square, all others are linear. Then we call this uh, path as parabola. 
Now suppose you have got ax square plus by square plus cx plus d y plus e etc is equal to 0. See, x square coefficient and y square coefficient, if both are plus, it is elliptical. You will come across all this in great detail in your geometry, that is not my purpose here. And uh, if one is positive, other is negative, you will call it as hyperbola. And exactly if you get x squared plus y square is equal to something these plus and both constants are same, we take it as a circle. Alright? It is just as an additional information I am giving it to you. Hope this is uh, uh, noted in your book. So in order to get what is the path of this uh, body, what shall we do? Eliminate t. So this t becomes x by u cos theta. This implies t is equal to x by u cos theta substituted. u sin theta by u cos theta minus half g x square by u square cos square theta. Now you may write this as x tan theta gx square by now this is the trajectory I think with the little knowledge that I tried to give you before what does this indicate one of the coordinates is square the others are linear therefore this is a parabola so the path of the projectile is always a Parabola, be it uh, oblique projectile, be it horizontal projectile, I'll show it in the case of horizontal projectile also, uh, be it uh, even oblique projectile from the top of a tower or from the ground, etc. This is a very standard equation expression. You have to all the time remember this, but be careful. Theta is taken with horizontal. Therefore, I got tan theta cos square theta. Otherwise, I could have got cot theta and sin square theta. Then it's as simple as that. Now, with the help of this, there are certain standard things that we need to find out and identify. Right? Uh, I'll give you those things one by one here. For example, I draw that uh, at again for you. So that uh, likewise. Now, maximum displacement vertical is called H maximum height, and the maximum horizontal displacement from the point of projection is called R range, and the Time taken from projection point to point of landfall is time of flight. And I told you it is symmetric on either side. Therefore, I want you to be careful that uh, when whenever uh, we talk uh, of any parameter in the ensuing discussion. I am doing it only for oblique projectiles. I am not going to talk of uh, either uh, your horizontal projectile or for that matter an oblique projectile from the top of a tower. I am only doing this and there are several jugglerics that are being done in this which I will try to attempt here. Right? And then we will proceed to for the other complications of other projectiles. So this is only oblique uh, symmetric projectile. This is what we are going to take. And uh, I write that uh, equation here. Y is equal to x tan theta minus gx square by 2u square cos square theta. 
Now, uh, this is 0, 0. This is r by 2 and the vertical part is this. And this is r, 0 because vertical part is here. And I have already shown you that the time of flight means the vertical component is 0. So your t becomes t, so t becomes time of flight. Mind you, this is only meant for all symmetric and oblique projectiles. That's all. Time of flight. Then vertical component of velocity must be. Zero. So, vertical component of velocity zero is uh, where this one. Vertical, isn't it? Sorry, not vertical displacement. Not component of velocity. Vertical displacement is zero because this is what I am trying to do. So, y is equal to zero. It corresponds to zero and then this point, two points. So, put y is equal to zero. What do you get? Uh, u sin theta t r t is equal to I already derived this uh, a little while ago, but this I am doing it so that you won't have any issue hereafter. Now most of the time this is, I will come back in a minute. Now, I'm just going to take my marker. So, t is equal to 2u sin theta, which I have already written. Now, the next part is maximum height. When do you get the maximum height? When the I write y is equal to h if vertical component of velocity is 0. So, vertical component of velocity is this. So, you put to u square so, it's equal to u square sin square theta by 2 g. I am writing it here u square sin square theta by 2g. So I got the so called maximum height. But technically, uh, because it is oblique symmetric projectile, I am taking it as maximum height. Otherwise, I would have taken this as only the maximum vertical displacement. I hope you have understood how these uh, uh, parameters are being derived in the simplest of uh, the procedures that we have. Right. Then the most important thing. What about this? If t is equal to time of flight, then your x is nothing but what is our range, range of the projectile, horizontal range of the projectile. So t is equal to t, x is equal to r. Where is the x? This one. This is your x. So, r is equal to u cos theta t. In this case, t is this. So, I substitute 2u sin theta u cos theta by g or u square sin 2 theta by g. R is equal to so because 2 sin theta cos theta is sin 2 theta. I have made use of those trigonometric identity. So I am writing that also here. So I have got a time of expression, the time of flight expression, maximum height expression, range expression. I repeat, I am talking of only 
the oblique projectile uh, symmetry. That is, if it is projected from one level, it moves and reaches the same level, not the same point. Same level. Now, this is how. Now, another uh, important thing is angle. For example, this is your V at any time t. And you know that this is u cos theta, this is alpha. Okay? You got this point. Now, if I want to know what is this alpha from this? How do you get that? What is this? You see, this is velocity at any time t. Go with velocity at any time t. Now, I am going to make matters very simple. Because it is in vector notation, I can directly write term alpha. Alpha is with horizontal is equal to the I, sorry, with I, J factor by I factor because I am taking with I. I already told you, 3A plus 4J. What angle it makes with the I? Tan inverse, uh, how much? 4 by 3. What angle it makes with J? 3 by 4. Tan inverse 3 by 4. I think something that I have already indicated to you before. You got this point, right? So with I, I get j factor that is u is and this is a factor. This is at any time t. What angle the velocity makes with that? Now, why I am giving you this is, sometimes you know they give us some models where they ask you uh, two seconds after projection, I'm just giving you an example. Two seconds after projection, uh, the projectile, I'll call it as it, makes uh, 53 degrees with the horizontal. One second later, look at the language being used. One second later, it makes 37 degrees. Fine. Now, they may ask anything and everything. They may say, what is uh, U? What is initial angle of projection? What is time of flight? What is maximum height? what is range. Now, I am not going to give this problems as is being taught in the regular standard uh, uh, classroom. I am going to see anything they can ask. If you want to get all these things, now T, H, R, how can you get? If I get U sin theta and U cos theta, or U and theta, then I get all that. So, I will try to get U theta or U cos theta, U sin theta. How we are going to see now? I, for example, in 2 seconds after projection, it makes 53 degrees. That means what? First thing I would take is uh, 10, 53 is u sin theta minus 2 g by u cos theta. You understood how t is equal to 2 that. Now he said 1 second later. So what is the total time? Initially 2 plus 1 later means total 3. Therefore, it is now at what angle it makes? 37. So, this will be 3g by u cos theta. I am now erasing this part. You got it now? I have substituted. Nothing else is given except these two. You know, most of the time 5337 is given because uh, you are sine 53 is equal to cos 37 is equal to 4 by 5 or sine 37 
cos 53 is 3 by 5. Obviously, tan 53 becomes 4 by 3, tan 37 becomes uh, uh, 3 by 4. See, you can directly write down. So, these are the things that I am going to make. You know, what do you write here? 4 by 3 is u sin theta minus 2 g by u cos theta. And tan 37, 3 by 4 is equal to u sin theta minus 3 d by two equations, two variables. One is u cos theta, other is u sin theta. So you have to simplify. I'll just try to give you here rather quickly. I am doing cross multiplication, and that you have this is the equation, and here. 3u cos theta is 4u sin theta minus 12g. Now, only thing is you eliminate uh, one, you will get the other. So, I will multiply this with 3, this with 4, and then 12u cos theta, 12u cos theta, uh, subtract. Say uh, this minus this. So, this becomes 0 here is 9u sin theta and this is 12u uh, uh, sin theta, right? So, I put 9 minus 12, all right? No, sorry, for, for 16. 9u sin theta minus 16, so you get uh, minus 7u sin theta and this is minus 18 and this is minus 48 means plus 48. So, 48G minus 18. So, that will give you U sin theta is equal to 30G by 7. You see, you got U sin theta. Now, if you substitute, you will get U cos theta. What is U cos theta? In any one of these expressions, you can substitute to get that, right? 30 g by 7. Uh, this uh, u cos theta, I will bring it on to this side and write 3 by 4 into what is u sin theta? 30 g by 7 minus 2 g. So, 30 minus 14 is 16, right? Uh, 16 means 4 into 3, 12g by 7. Now you got u sin theta. Now I need not have to tell you. If you divide these two, you will get uh, tan theta is 30 by 12. So theta you got. Square and add, you will get your magnitude. And now substitute in all these things. This is how I am going to give you a numerical problem. I am not going to simplify to the core and give those answers. I mean, that is a, a simple exercise, arithmetic exercise, which you can very easily do. But I, I want you to understand the concept behind it. Uh, without any information, they say it makes, uh, after two seconds, certain angle, one second, certain uh, interval later, it will make some other angle. With these two, you can get everything pertaining to the projector, right? So, this is the model that you have to understand. Hope it is clear to you. Right? Now, okay. Now, uh, with uh, this background, now let me tell you, suppose complementary angles of projection means uh, So, theta and 90 minus theta. Theta and 90 minus theta. Now, theta with horizontal. So, if I project the same thing with same u, mod u is same. Mod u is same. I am going to now compare these cases. What is a t theta? 2u sin theta by g. 
what is t 90 minus theta to u sin 90 minus theta becomes cos theta you got this in a similar way h theta u square sin square theta by 2 g h 90 minus theta u square cos square theta by 2 g in a similar way r theta u square uh, sin 2 theta is a 2 sin theta cos theta by g. R 90 minus theta is u square 2 sin 90 minus theta cos theta cos 90 minus theta sin theta. Again you are getting same expression. That means what? In the case of oblique symmetric projectile, range is same. That means from the level you are talking about, you project a, a body with certain uh, speed, say 30 meters per second, at 30 degree angle, or you project the same body with the same 30 degrees, same 30 meters per second, but at 60 degrees. That range and this range are one and the same, but not so. In the case of uh, your time of flight or maximum, now that's what I'm going to look at uh, rather deeply here. Now, all for complementary angles only. Now, first thing that you should understand is as theta increases, uh, sine theta also increases. So, time of flight is proportional to theta. That means more theta, more is the time of flight. With horizontal, I am talking about. With horizontal. Right? Now, similarly, h also you can see. It is also proportional to sine theta whole square. That means h also is proportional to theta. That means a 20 degree, 30 degree, 40 degree, mind you, all this comparison is done only for a constant mod u. Now, don't say constant velocity. Velocity means I can't change the angles, right? So, constant speed only I can talk of. And then uh, you have shown that t is proportional to theta. H is also proportional to theta. But as far as... Uh, a range is concerned. Now, you see, as theta increases, there is a sin theta and cos theta. So, when is R? R is max. Maybe we look at it. Um, one by one. Now, T is proper. What is T max? That means maximum time of flight when sin theta becomes 1. So it becomes 2u by g. And what is h max? That means the maximum possible height. The maximum possible vertical displacement. That is equal to, uh, when is this maximum? When this is 1, it becomes u square by 2g. Similarly, when r is maximum, when sine 2 theta is equal to 1, right? That also I will tell you now. Uh, R max is equal to u square by g when sine 2 theta equal to 1 or 2 theta equal to pi by 2 or theta equal to pi by 4. So, if the angle of projection is 45 degrees, remember several ifs and buts in this, I am talking of the same horizontal level and from the point of projection, if this makes an angle 45 degrees, then uh, it will uh, have the maximum range. What does that mean? Till 45 degrees. For example, if I do at 30 degrees, 30 degrees, 20 degrees if I say, you get some range. 
30 degrees range is more, 45 degrees maximum. If we go to 60 degrees, it will decrease. So what does it mean? R increases with the theta from theta is equal to 0 to pi by 4. That means in 45 degrees it increases. Then R decreases with the theta from theta equal to pi by 4 to pi by 2. Now this is important. Till 45 degrees it goes on increase, same mod you mind you. And from 45 onwards the value goes on decreasing. And for complementary angles, you have shown here the range is one and the same. You need not put uh, two values here, r theta and r90 minus theta are simply one and the same. Now, uh, people try to put some uh, general uh, jugglery type of questions. I'll just give you a couple of such examples for you to be familiar with this. Say for example, I try to play with these things a bit. Now, look at this. If I multiply these two, generally you may take it as T1, T2, H1, H2, R, likewise. So, if I do that, what do I get? 4 u square sin theta cos theta by g square. You understood this? So, how can you write this? 2 u square, uh, if I uh, split this 4 into 2, 2, you know, 2 u square 2 sin theta cos theta by g is nothing but r. So, you can write it as 2r by, whether you write r theta or r 90 minus theta, it makes no difference. So, I can write r theta is equal to g by 2 half g Whether you want to memorize or not, it's your problem. But generally, I don't wish you do that. You can work it out at any stage, wherever you want it. It's not a very big deal. Okay? Uh, you, you can do that. In a similar way, if you do H theta and H90 minus theta. See, sin theta, cos theta combination, you should get in terms of it. And you see what is this? H theta h 90 minus theta. Now you have u square sin square theta and uh, u square cos square theta by 4 g square, 2 g into 2 g. Now what I do here, I take uh, 4 and divide it with 4. Why? Because I can write the whole thing as 2u square sin theta cos theta by g whole square into this 4 into 4, 1 by 16. And this is nothing but your r, you see? So I can write this as r theta square by 16. R R theta is equal to 16 H theta H 19 minus theta. As I tell you, not much of significance in this. We need not read it. But how you can get, they try to give you too many such examples in the books. I'm sure you can ignore most of them, right? So this is how uh, whenever they give in terms of complementary angles, you have to work it out. Anyway, thank you.